Ms. Benegi, Dr. Brown, Ms. Grass, Mr. Essenclair, yeah. Ms. Hollingworth, yes. Mr. Knuckles, yes. Ms. Sodic, here. Vice President Hooker, here. President Group. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the Superintendent of Schools in the following manner. On January 10, 2024, notice of this meeting was posted on the interior of the School Administration Office's 95 Grove Street, Haddonfield. Written notice was submitted and filed with the Haddonfield Borough Clerk, and notices were emailed to the Courier Post and the Retrospect newspaper. Uh, we don't have any student commendations tonight, but we do have commendations for the New Jersey Educator of the Year recognition. Yeah, I, I, I am uh, so happy to be able to do this this evening. This uh, this process has actually been uh, become one of the, my, my favorite parts of my job. Um, getting to recognize teachers and, and, and support staff for the excellent work that they do is something uh, we're really proud of. Uh, and we're happy to be able to be here this evening to honor our outstanding educators and their loved ones. So um, let me tell you a little bit about this. Oh, gosh, I, 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 no. um, let me tell you a little bit about this award. So this is part of the Governor's Educator of the Year Award. Um, the vast majority of school districts across the state of New Jersey participate in this. And it's a process by which outstanding and exceptional educators uh, are recognized. Uh, there's a set of eligibility criteria that uh, staff members are evaluated against, but I'm gonna tell you what this boils down to. I was fortunate enough to have a lot of good mentors in my career. And when I first started uh, as an administrator, one of my mentors instilled this value. He said, the most important job you have as a principal or as a school administrator is hiring not good, but great educators. It's the, it will be the key to your success. So now nearly 25 years later, it's something that I really carry with me. And the people that are in the room tonight to be honored are great educators. Another part of my job uh, th that I enjoy is interviewing, hiring people. And we often get asked the question when we're interviewing folks, uh, you know, an aspiring teacher might ask, well, what are you looking for in a teacher? Uh, and my answer is usually the same, and it boils down to two things, three things. Someone who loves children, who's passionate about education, and is a lifelong learner. And I'm really happy that all of our award recipients tonight really do embody that. So while there's the award criteria, I think there's a higher level that these people aspire to and have reached, and we're very lucky to have them. Um, so a little bit about how this process works. So every year we solicit nominations. Uh, a teacher, colleague, students, parents in the community, anyone can nominate uh, an educator. And every year we average about 250 nominations. Uh, that's how many submissions we get. So it's a very vibrant process, a highly competitive process. Um, and these are the individuals that rose to the top this year. Um, when you win as the educator of the year in the district, you also then become eligible to apply for county teacher of the year. Uh, if you get county teacher of the year, you have the option to uh, apply to be teacher of the year. Now, in a school district like Haddonfield, we're very, very fortunate. Um, in the recent past, recent few years, we've had 
Uh, the State Teacher of the Year Award winner, uh, which is Kim Dixtine Hughes from the high school. And Ron Smith, the current environmental science teacher at the high school, is the current Camden County Teacher of the Year. So you guys have a lot to live up to. There's some great people here. And uh, I, I really would look forward to one of these folks. We've only been involved this. in this program for like five years. Yeah, right? yeah. So in five years, we've got two county teachers and a state teacher. So um, it speaks a lot about who we have in our buildings. So let me get into the announcement of the award winners. And I'm just going to read to you a, a brief excerpt of some of the nominations uh, that were uh, put out. So first, I'm going to ask uh, Stacey Brown down to come on up. And I had the, the great fortune of working very closely uh, with Stacy in my role as director of special education. You stay in the place long enough, they give you enough jobs, you get to work with a lot of different people. So, so fortunately, most of the people here tonight, I've, I've had a, a direct working relationship. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have Stacy here. So here is what uh, Stacy's nomination in part read. Stacy has worked with two of my children and has never missed a chance to reach out to me when needed. She is not only concerned about my children's academic success, but their overall well-being. She shares ideas on how to help them become more confident, more comfortable at school, and to be their best selves. Mm -hmm. Stacy, thank you so very much, and congratulations. <laughs> uh, we'll do a quick we'll one with all, the, uh, all the folks at the end. Um, Jenny Gregory can't be with us this evening. Jenny Gregory is a fourth grade teacher at Central Elementary. Um, uh, this is what the nomination said, uh, nominees, uh, the nominating individual said about Jenny. Mrs. Gregory teaches life skills such as cooperation and communication. In addition to thoroughly covering the course curriculum, she has a subtle manner and sets the tone that provides a supportive and safe learning environment. Round of applause for Ms. Gregory. I can have uh, Ori Grissy come on up. Ori, congratulations. Uh, I have a great to working together during my time as principal at Tatum. Uh, so how, how long has it been? This is my 13th year. So we're lucky to have you. And this is what uh, they said about Ori. Ori serves as a great reminder that innovation doesn't just have to mean high tech. She uses a variety of tools and methods to help children achieve their personal best goals. She is well versed in the SEL component of the curriculum and is able to tap into what kids need to succeed. Or congratulations, we're so happy to have you. I'd like to welcome up Kevin Kozak. It's been, it's been a long week for Kevin. Uh, Kevin has also <laughs> served on the uh, interview principal uh, committee. And, uh, so this is our third evening out together. <laughs> All right, so here, here's, what, uh, here, here's what was written about Kevin. As I see every day in my science class, Mr. Kozak is really great at ensuring that every student understands and is confident in whatever we are studying. What I believe is more important and more effective in inspiring students to learn is getting to know each student personally and understanding their situation. Kevin, congratulations. Thank you so much. I, I think it's really incredible. You know, as you as you listen to these nominations, it's so much more than teaching and learning about math, science, and language arts. Really, a thread in all of these is about connections, about making connections with students, which is such an integral part of what we do as educators. I'd like to welcome up uh, Katie McCann. Now, Katie and I have not worked directly together. Uh, but when I go over to Haddon School, Katie's class is, is one of my most favorite to visit. Uh, it's always a very vibrant, positive, and engaging learning environment. So uh, we're really lucky to have you, Katie. You. All right, so here's what they said about you. Uh, Katie is clearly a skilled teacher who differentiates, integrates technology, and utilizes multiple modalities of instruction to reach all learners. However, the best thing about Katie is that she makes a point to develop a relationship with her students, families, and maintain that, maintains that relationship throughout the school year and beyond. Katie, congratulations. Thank you. We're so lucky to have you. Thank you so much. And I'd like to welcome up uh, Heather Radich. 
We're also three for three with Heather. Heather's also part of the interview committee. We're really lucky to have you, Heather. Heather, uh, th this is what was written about you in part. Heather has been a special education one-on-one -on -one for over 15 years. She works on making sure that her students are successful in all classrooms. She ensures that modifications and accommodations are being followed and that her students are included in every aspect of, of the day. And, and because I work very closely with Heather, particularly in my role as, as director of special education, um, Heather is somebody that if you needed something done, if you needed a little something extra, if you needed a class coverage, or you just needed some extra help with a student, Heather, you're always willing to do that. Um, and the loyalty that you have shown in the district and your level of commitment from the committees that you work on to the input that you provide us, uh, it's been invaluable and we're so lucky to have you. Oh, thank, you. thank you very much. <laughs> Michelle Scott is also uh, a winner. She's uh, not able to be with us this evening. Uh, but I do want to read what was written about her. Uh, Miss Scott is very good. Oh, I'm realizing I'm not advancing these slides and have these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this will be posted on the website tomorrow, by the way. Miss Scott is very good at advocating for her students. She communicates very well exactly what they need because she goes out of her way to really understand her students. This form of leadership is extremely helpful because she is always my number one supporter, no matter what. And that was written by a student. And our last recipient uh, this evening is Krista Wesley. Krista, come on up. I, 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 um, um, I, I recall when we came into your classroom to give the award, I, your students look more excited than you did. I don't know if it was just the shock and awe of everyone coming into your classroom. But when you think about it, it really is an indication of the impact that you make on students. And uh, for them to celebrate in, in your success uh, just really shows the impact that you're making with them every day. So we really appreciate it. Let me read what they said about uh, Krista. Uh, Miss Wesley is notable for making non-math people into students who love coming to her class every day. Many of the people in my class have always complained about learning math, yet in her class, not a single student expressed a true distaste for math. <laughs> Projects such as the parabolas in real life, as well as her guest speakers, are just a few of the reasons people love learning with her. And again, that's from a student. I think that's one of the highest compliments you could receive. So congratulations. <laughs> You want to get on camera? You should be over here. That way, people at home can't see us. So, all right. It's true. Camera. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank the family and, and, and loved ones for being here. I think it makes the night extra special. Thank you for allowing us to have your loved ones uh, to help make our school districts. Yes. Um, so thank you for all the support that you give them. Uh, and it was quite a meeting at all tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brill. That was really a wonderful tribute. And I, I think you may have pointed out, if not, you notice the nominations came from students, parents, and colleagues. It says a lot, right? It's coming from all those different areas. It's really impactful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, Dr. Thank you. Uh, there's no 
take a, a quick uh, a, a quick moment uh, to say it's smoothie night here at the uh, <laughs> School of Education. Uh, big shout out to Groovy Smoothies. Uh, <laughs> with, with smoothies. An absolutely wonderful, wonderful family. Um, okay, so moving on to committee reports. Uh, curriculum, did I get anything? Yeah, I do. We met um, just yesterday, as a matter of fact. Had a really uh, productive conversation. We talked about a couple of topics. First was uh, the SMARTS executive functioning pilot for grade five at Central. We were lucky to have Ms. Simkis join us to talk a little bit about um, a need identified around executive functioning skills that will really help to support our fifth graders and equip them for success as they transition into middle school, which those of us who have seen such transitions at home know is a big difference to go from being a little elementary school student to a big middle school student. So um, this includes things like time management, organization, planning, prioritizing, and self-regulation. And uh, there are essentially a a pilot program will be um, initiating for fifth grade, again, to help with this transition process. The program is highly affordable. Uh, Shannon, Mrs. Simkis found a really phenomenal um, offering, and there are various protocols in place around kind of measuring the success, um, the you know effectiveness of this program with pre and post survey tools. And uh, there are uh, letters for parents that explain the program and kind of what's in scope so that parents can reinforce stuff at home, which as parents, I think we can all agree is super helpful to help kids really um, kind of internalize these lessons and things they're learning. We talked about um, the updated job description for the math, math specialist roles, and that was um, sort of a led from the fact that they were typically called math interventionists and as Gino explained um, and Matt explained, essentially the, the role includes lots of other things beyond purely intervention like teacher coaching, professional development work and other um, supports of leadership roles. So essentially this the title reflects the role more effectively. We talked about the science audit proposal. Uh, Matt gave us a really great Description, this is something we hit on in the last iteration too, around the need to revisit the science ed holistically for the, throughout the district um, with initial focus at the high school level and then moving through middle school and elementary school and really ensuring that the program kind of end to end, um, you know, fits together well, so to speak. There are not new standards per se, this is just a more holistic view of the science curriculum. We then talked about a quick update on the summer programming, and I think, um, as folks are aware, good news that Gino shared, which is that we will be offering a summer enrichment program at no cost to families for uh, potentially for the for the final year at no cost because we have um, we are able to leverage the ESSER funds, which will uh, which need to be spent before October. There are lots of interesting courses, both intervention-based classes that are invite only with really small group interventions. Uh, and then there are things that are um, interest-based course. For example, Lego Robotics, Taylor Swift, which I am pretty excited about. <laughs> um, Adventures in Art, Creative Writing, Screenwriting, and Cinema Studies are among the many offerings. And uh, that's all, you know, all good, exciting stuff that this district is offering, again, as, as supplemental for the, for the school year, both the fun stuff and the more intervention-based stuff. Um, there are, we're also adding in supplemental courses in math and ELA and exploring the ability to do some social skills and executive functioning classes, pe uh, potentially pending staffing. So this is uh, a lot. <laughs> And uh, it was it was a great meeting. That is it. Any questions, anyone that I can address? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Finance. That's the day we That's are meeting next week. Right. Okay. Was there a policy meeting? <laughs> <laughs> um, we met this morning <laughs> at eight thirty. So um, I haven't shared the minutes yet, but I've got you know I have some notes. 
Um, and it may look like on the agenda we didn't do anything, but it was just because we met this morning that we didn't want to, to like dump it on, you know what I mean? So you'll see some next month and then even more. We had a really, really large agenda, but we also had a guest join us, two guests join us, uh, which took some time. So we met with um, a couple of doctors from Temple who are interested in advertising a study on um, social anxiety and what that looks like in its many forms and kids. And so we were learning about what that study would entail and we will be voting on that at the end of the month if we approve that they can, we can email the flyer essentially. It's not in interfering with school, right? It has nothing to do with the school day or school programming. It's just right. there. Um, so we met with them and, and learned more about that. It is a, Three point seven million dollar panel, which is government funded, and so it's exciting, you know, <laughs> and big. Um, and so the hope is the results of that work that'll be years long will influence treatment of kiddos and make have a positive. Uh, it would be completely optional, and kids and families would get paid if they do participate oh. and qualify. So you'll you'll see more about that. Um, and then the three policies that I think we. Um, successfully discussed were policy 1140. And again, I'll give this to you. Um, we had a big kind of policy update around educational equity. Um, there, the state law has, the statute has changed. And so that means it's a ripple effect of having to update kind of the terminology and the phrases and those kinds of things to our policies. Um, so for policy 1140, um, we talked about discussion, discuss, we talked about adding a definition of equity and how we use the state definition of equity, but how, like, should definitions be in our policy? How does that work? But then if you put a definition in the policy that's dependent on the state and the state changes that definition, then how are we gonna keep track of our 400 plus policies? We have a, we have lots of policies. Yeah, four, <laughs> so, 437. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, instead, what we decided is we have a bylaws section. Um, we actually voted recently on updating like our address. It's kind of like the basics of the board, and one of them is kind of a dictionary of sorts, a definition. And so we're going to going to add equity to that and make sure any of these terms around um, educational equity that align with the, this update from the state that we get that in that one document. We can keep that one updated much more easily. <laughs> Um, than the others. Um, we also looked at policy 1523, which is the comprehensive 23, which is the comprehensive equity plan. Um, and again, these are all policies that we have already. These are just some revisions we're making. We just asked some clarifying questions, but there was no big discussion around that. It seems straightforward that um, the suggested edits that edits that you know we think we need to do and then we looked at policy and regulation 1530 these are both mandated so we'll vote on both so regulation and the policy regulation remember is how the district is going to implement the policy normally we don't have a say in process but the mandated ones we do um, and so we had a discussion about what is included in protected categories the state web website has up to date language around all these so then if we link things in policies, we have to make sure the links actually work and don't go dead. So again, similar to the discussion on definitions, we've decided no links. <laughs> um, but that if anyone in the public was interested, they could easily contact any of us and we can Google the state department, the statute that's in the policy, right, and get them the link that they need. Or they can do that too. Um, and so we feel like it's accessible enough, right, that we don't need to go crazy trying to maintain our 437 policies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we, we were really just talking about, does the public understand this? What is the purpose of a policy? You know, like we're kind of not, we're ending up having those kinds of discussions because it was this nitty gritty stuff. And um, discuss that policies are really for the benefit of the district and school personnel, right? That they know what to do and we're yeah. telling them you're charged with us. And we hope that the public or anyone who comes across our website and looks at it can make sense of it, that they're readable, but that they're not our, they're not our primary audience. Our primary audience is school personnel. And so we kind of just, we're, I don't know, hashing that stuff out. So when you see the policies next month, right? Yeah, you'll be um, next month, first reading. 
So when you see those policies next month, when you make sense of all those edits, and if you have some of these wonderings, we have discussed them, but we're obviously open to any other thoughts at all. And then we have a big pile for next month. And so um, Linda was uh, even guest, bigger. and I was like, come on back. <laughs> <laughs> you did all your homework, and we did. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple questions. Sure. <clears throat> First, the um, email regarding the study opportunity. Do we have a policy on point we about did. so that's yeah, okay. so we did we, we did look at that policy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's all. But I figured we did. I figured <laughs> yeah. you looked at it. Just that to, is yeah. policy. Ninety fifty. Ninety five fifty. Yeah. Ninety five fifty. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a policy. Yes. I don't know if that's a good thing. And then you mentioned the not a defense. You didn't you didn't hear it, but Jess was like. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 Showing You're up. Cool. <laughs> and you mentioned the very good reason why we wouldn't put hyperlinks directly in the policies themselves, right. but for the public's help, maybe we just put a link from at the policy level to the state DOE website policy. Like, like somewhere on our website. Landing page. Like, yeah. Where then they can look at the individual oh, yeah. policies so that at least they know, like, as I'm Googling, this is the state website. So the policy is in the statute in that. Uh, so, yeah. so you just copy and paste that on Google. I, and that is probably the easiest way yeah. to do it. Yeah. Coming from a place that knowing what it's like to maintain a website, where you need to maintain somebody else's links. Um, yeah, and those, exactly. that, that, those links can change. And then that's dead links on your site. Oops. You would be so surprised how many dead links. I would not. Linda, I would. I would not be surprised. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, is, it is a nightmare. Um, fair. Was it, was that, was that, Thank you. Good meeting. That's bad. All right, uh, moving on to LRFP, we did meet. Um, we met with our architects again. Um, we went through blueprints um, school by school. The main focus uh, right now is really to make sure that at every school that we have enough additional classrooms uh, to handle the bringing the, the kindergarten uh, in-house and to make sure that we are reaching our goals of um, having enough room for OTPT and, and special education, small group instruction. So going through one school at a time, looking at them one more time. Um, we are meeting two weeks uh, from Tuesday, uh, this past Monday, Tuesday? 25th. 25th, yeah. Um, and we think that maybe we will be at a place to say, this might be it. As long as we are ready by the end of March, then uh, they feel like we'll be able to get things submitted and have a December um, referendum. So that's still up in the air, not committing to that, but it's looking good. Um, I will tell you that personally, the thing that was so frustrating to me, so we know that there will be additional students coming into the district. And we can't get funding for students who are not yet in the district. So even though we know they're coming and we think that we're doing the right thing in planning for that, none of that will be funded, which is um, you have to do what you have to do. So we'll make the, the best decisions we can at that next meeting. And then hopefully we will be at a place to, to bring that forward and say, here's the plan. So, um, Jamie, Jamie, before you go on, yeah, was, oh, I'm sorry, any questions? <laughs> that was a lot of elementary, but middle and high school are also included. Yep. In yeah, 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 okay, yep, yep. Yes. Okay. yep. Sure. yep. Cool. Um, I will report for, for Jamie for negotiations. We met this week uh, as well. Things are moving along, and we are um, hoping to be meeting again in the next couple of weeks there. So just 25th as well. Yep. <laughs> 25th is the next meeting. Next negotiation. Can you remind me the timeline that we need to nail this down? You want to be, we want to have it done by June 30th when this June contract 30, yeah, ends. This but um, last, last negotiation we ended, we 
settled before the contract expired. It's the first time in 30 some years. We yeah, had. And, so and that was good. all that made credit, credit to the, the superintendent. So, uh, they, they and working the with the HEA and the HEA. Yeah, it really was. It was the job president, all. <laughs> vice president, and these guys, they did a great job. That's fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Um, PTA updates? Anyone? All righty. Uh, assistant superintendent report. Okay. Superintendent. <laughs> 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 I'm going to so um we're here today march 14th and uh i want to take a look at our current enrollment i have handouts there i, I gave board handouts and then looking forward because enrollment right now is one issue but as, as Linda pointed out we have some concerns about future enrollment things we have to really start we were talking about this we have to start acting is i guess what i'm going to say um so this is our project so this is the, the fourth column there is enrollment today 314 24. the next column is what we project for next year currently that's based on registration from this year uh potential tuition students from this year now those numbers are they're Moving targets. This is this is something no one leaves the district at all, um, and some of the registration. Even some of the registrations aren't complete. So we have people who have registered, but haven't given us documentation yet. So we assume they're not just making it up. But until they're until they're locked in, we don't want to count them. But we're looking at where we are. Um, there's things in there like the, the preschool. That number fluctuates greatly. Um, so you can see um, we're going up a little bit you know, four or five students, but the thing we're going to look at is where those students are. We're going to notice as we go through our secondary numbers are down. It's our elementary numbers that are rising pretty rapidly. And the thing about when you build schedules and, and things in school, you can hide a lot more kids in high school with courses and, and scheduling than you can with elementary, right? Those numbers are pretty hard. Um, 25 is our class size number. Boom, boom, boom. All those things happen. High school, you, you, shift, you shift the section here and do that. You can, you can hide kids much better. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we don't have our second graders. Our second graders are going to different classes. You're not going to different classes, classes but they're there, and... right? So here's the high school and the middle school yeah. next year. Um, <laughs> you see, help. the middle school's got a, a large jump. The high school is, is, is coming down, actually, because they have a relatively large graduation class this year, 226, and under two, fewer than 200 come out. Uh, but there are at least three or four tuition students in, in being interviewed right now for grade nine, so that'll probably go up. We also tend to get people coming in over the summer of high school. Uh, here's Central, um, and look at both this year and next year. Three of the five grades, or six grades of Central, are at capacity currently. And it should be noted that, um, they were over capacity. They're over capacity, they right. There are there are roughly in our elementary schools, we have roughly 15 students who are not in their current neighborhood schools. Because of most of many of them out of this place. Some of the, some of them are by I lived in Tatum, I moved to Central, I want my kids to stay at Tatum. So we have those. We also have students who are displaced. So there's a good number of students we have who are not currently in their actual neighborhood schools. Um and, and I did, I, I think I, I sent an email to the board today giving some background. If I actually learned how to pin all, all the, there's 214 first graders here. I put a map the other I pinned all their homes. I won't show it here because you see where everyone lives. I'm about to do that. <laughs> but you notice these outliers where there's a person with Tatum who's all the way down, the, almost in the Haddon section in the central. And there's a person, so you can see where these people are, are coming, uh, being displaced out of their, out of their areas. Um, here's Haddon's numbers. Um, and Haddon's got the most, and the other thing to look at is in 24, 25, I, I went back to central. Um, I have 75. There are currently 77 kids registered for first grade of central. That's not including the one student who's already voluntarily moved to Haddon. So there would be 78 at central school. I put who's going to be there, not the enrollment, because there are going to be 75 kids at central. Um, here's Haddon. Um, for next year, we can see they're also growing by some 20 some students, which is a big jump for Haddon. Kid first grade next year, 64 in Haddon. 
10 of those are coming from Tatum and Central. So that's a big number, right? Um, not it's, it's, it's seven from Tatum, three from Central to be specific. Um, here's Tatum. Once again, the 75 in first grade there represents uh, seven, six, seven students who are going to take to um, the hat. Uh, one has voluntarily go, the other one, dress was a bit minute, but that but looks like we asked people to let us know by tomorrow if they were interested in volunteering. So, what my policy we asked for volunteers, uh, we gave them till tomorrow. Um, so, we'll see if anyone else goes. And then, this is the district wide enrollment in elementary. Um, and you can see where that those numbers are, are jumping both in this year and in next year. So it goes up, you know, 23 students district wide elementary school. Um, currently, this is next year's rising first graders. Here's who's registered mm -hmm. actually by their homeschools: 77 at Central, 56 at Haddon, 81 at Tatum. Then Haddon 56 includes two volunteers from one from Central and one from Tatum. So you can see where where we're getting challenges there's two <coughs> policies that address this the one is class size here's our class size limits 25 and k to 3 27 and 4 and 5th um and then 5120 which is assigned to students so here's what we have to do this year um according to policy if this class is full we ask for volunteers. If we don't get enough, we have a lottery of students who don't have priority at their home schools. Priority is siblings. Priority is people who've already been in the school. Um, and priority is registration dates and stuff like that, according to policy. So we have we we, are, we will be holding a lottery as to who's going to be displaced from their school. Um, we talked when we had this policy was updated recently. We talked about should we put distance in there? Should we do this? Should we do that? And it was kind of like, how do you decide these things? And, and the, well, the one thing we all knew is we're not going to be the arbitrators of hardship, saying who's, whose reason is better than someone else's, right? Because everyone's got hardships and has reasons. So this is the policy. This lottery system has been in there for years. We, we stuck with that policy. Um, Jack, one question yes. about the lottery. Mm -hmm. Do we let people know what what the lottery odds are because it's not going to be one in seven we will so once we okay. once we have those numbers down we'll communicate out to just everyone psychologically some people might want to choose for right. themselves versus right. so maybe yeah, we'll, try, we'll do that have another, we'll put that out something early next week and we'll say yes. yeah I mean, if you think about it and this is maybe you should have tried to articulate like if you are a first grader in central Tatum, you are maxed out class size for most of your career in elementary if you're in Haddon, your class is a 21. And some people would prefer that difference, right? Because it's not just going to be next year that you're maxed out. It's going to be going through, right? That's 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 a big deal. So this is also in policy. And I highlighted the red. Unless the, the, this is a maximum, we, we do this. Unless the superintendent recommends adding additional sections. Right? So I could say we're going to add sections. Where are you going to put them? She's more than where you're going to put It's pretty complicated. So... If we were to add a section, um, there's a couple things that really get impacted. First of all is our schedule. Our schedule's taken years to, 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 to I think it's perfect. It's, it's a really good schedule right now. And it, it contains time for teachers to have common planning time and grade level meetings, which is best practice. That way you can work with your colleagues to understand what's going on and across the district, which, which helps with the fidelity of, of content, right? We're putting in a new math program next year. We want our teachers to be able to work together, not just within their building, but across the district to help each other out. It's it's good for teachers. For years, teachers worked in isolation, even though it's a very, you know, it's a very uh, you know, collaborative. collaborative thing. But people tend to work. This is a, we we worked hard to get this in there because it's so important. And maybe even more importantly, um, the schedule meets all our contractual obligations for prep time, lunches, and those things. If we we're out of section, we would no longer be able to meet those contractual obligations and we would have to require additional staff. And that's a big deal. Um, fiscally, this is connected to that. We wouldn't just be adding a teacher in a classroom. 
because we would have to get specials, art, um, art, music, world bank, we don't have any more space. We'd have to hire three to four part-time teachers in addition to the full-time teacher, plus materials and supplies. It's probably $150,000 to the low side of what it would cost at a section between several part-time teachers. Me, yeah, yeah well, I said to the low <laughs> side. Um, you know, part-time teachers, and more challenging than, than paying for them. Yeah. Who's going to come and be a part-time phys ed teacher, a part-time art teacher, a part-time music teacher, a part-time librarian, and a part-time world language teacher? Right? That's really hard. You, the odds of us doing that would be slim. Right? And then you're looking at, you know, just, just it's just not a good, it's obviously not what we Well, I think it, too, your comment earlier, like, at high school, it's easier. A part-time teacher at the high school means every day you have first period. Right. A special part-time teacher means on day five and three, because we you all have different yeah. districts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's a wackadoodle part-time yeah. schedule. Yeah. That's yeah. not the, yeah. so even that makes it harder. And, and even, there's even things we can do. Every time I just named five, reason I said three or four. We may be able to squeeze another section or two out of a world language teacher or borrow one from another place. Librarians. Don't have to be certified libraries, they can be certified teachers. Be in. So you can find some, maybe if you find an art teacher who also will take library, you could, we could do that type of stuff, maybe and get lucky. Um, but still, the likelihood of us putting it together. And then space, where? Um, and then even the bigger question is which school? We now have two schools that are over. We have to do this twice. I mean, we, we just went through $600,000 in budget cuts, and now we're going to put in this. Fiscally, it's not the responsible thing to do. Um, and, and, and then if we add a section this year and the numbers are high next year, now we've set, we're adding sections. Last year we were above in central. We did look, we followed our policy in the lottery. So that's, that's where we are with this right now. Um, and then there's this, this is our, our map that shows us where we go to school. And there's a yellow, I probably should have done a better job. I, I put a yellow dot. If you look close, there's a yellow dot. Um, Right below, right between Central oh, that's and, where and the Haddonfield yes. place, place. Yeah, that's, that's so that's field. that's the place of Haddonfield, which is a new development on Snowden. That falls into the Tatum section, next to the Central section. If we think back to where our crowding is, it's those two schools. Which means if, if, if the place of Haddonfield were over by Haddon, we wouldn't be as concerned with that because there's flex, there's room in Haddon. This falls in Tatum right next to central so if you try to keep your neighborhoods going like, we, like our goal is to keep our neighborhood schools going that's really problematic because the place that had field which is the name of the developer they're calling it is 20 units and here's the makeup four one bedroom 10 two bedroom six three bedroom all right and that's going to be completed probably by january or february of next year so a year from now we could have 30, 30 I mean, if you, see, if you see, if you look at the bedroom, if you say the two bedroom and the three bedroom, that's, and there's a parent of a room and a child in each room, that's 12 and 10, that's 22 potential new students as early as 12 months from now. By 25, 26, we have to be prepared for that. We're trying to prepare for it now, but that is something that really is, is harsh. So I have here... We've got to consider redefining our catchment zones. Catchment zones are weird, uh, of neighborhood areas. We have to consider looking at that. Now, I share with, with the board a model. I did a couple of different models. I shared one that worked and kind of didn't work and, and this and that. Um, but we have to investigate this seriously and take a real hard look at what the solution is. When was the last time we did that, engaged uh, in that process? Jack, Jerry, it's been... Uh, I've been there 16 years and we never... So, so it seems like you know we update our curriculum. So we, yeah. but so we, we do have to get we got to look at this is still working. Yeah, we have to get some we have to get some help in consulting because this is this 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 is a one year snapshot, right? Yeah. Right. And so we don't want to say this is what it's going to be forever. Right. Um, but Central's been crowded for a while, and we have that new so we can we can be relatively sure that we have to at least consider the plans, right? I'm not sure. I don't. We're not going to definitely do it. It's happen. But we have to consider what that looks like in that. That's 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 the point there. Um, so on a different topic, 
Any, any questions about the, the, those enrollment numbers and that type of stuff? I just think any consultant that we hire or any sort of work we do there, we want to try and capture kids that we know already exist. Sure. Um, yeah. Like preschoolers, try and see what those numbers are. And their intents, obviously, that's not going to be set in stone, but it would be helpful information. And also a comparison of this was the last time we did a district thing. This is how many either additional units or bedrooms people are now in the town, just so that we have a general sense yeah, well, of what we're looking at. Well, and, and we'll, well, you know, to reach out to who to find people who've done this before, and right? other other school districts and yeah. find people who can give us advice on it. Um, like I said, I, I, I one of my meetings when I sent you guys. I'm a trained English teacher, and I'm trying to figure yeah. this out. It's not my this is not my world, but but I know enough to know that we have to. Really be thoughtful. Time to act. So I appreciate time that sensitivity because uh, Jess also knows when Evesham redistrict, they didn't care where you were or how old you were. So, new new school for fifth grade wasn't the highlight of my elementary school. Yeah, so that's, that's not something we So, I really right. like yeah. that yeah. you guys are thinking about this in a holistic, proactive I mean, way. The, yeah. I mean, in theory, we could. But that's traumatic for no reason. Yeah, we could fix this right now. Right, and just move school, but we're not going to do that because you're already in kindergarten in central, and you're going to stay in central school. We, we, we respect that, but people want that, and that's that's important. Um, never know as you came in today, you probably noticed our, our environments a little, a little brighter and different right now, right? So, they are doing some upgrades at the library. There's the small ones, but this the library's gotten uh, kind of beat up to stale. It's, it's, a, it's a heavily used area, so we, we try to make the best of it. Um, so there, there's fresh paint. They are having new there's shelving missing, but there's new shelving coming. It'll be lower shelving, so you can see across the room. We'll keep the open up there. Uh, there's gonna be new furniture. Some of the furniture is falling apart. It's 12 or 13 years old. Um, it gets used differently in elementary furniture because if you come in here, there's 150 kids here any time oh. until the day. Other adult body kids. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and then we're looking at materials, what we have here, right? So we have like periodicals, like no one takes magazines out of the library. We're keeping newspapers because kids still read the newspapers, but they don't use the magazines. And then there, there, then there's going to be some book reading. You'll notice that there's fewer shelves. Um, and so based on, and the, I asked Jess, I said, how do you decide what comes here, what, what happens? And she gave me this material, more is less. And this is a guy the reading library and an ALA, American Library Association. These are the things you look for. Inaccurate, misleading, unreliable sources, out of date or unused materials. We have books that have been checked out in 25 years. We don't need to keep those around, right? We have books where they have, they're just they're 20 years old and they're about history or American politics and it's just, it just don't make sense anymore. Um, poor condition, cluttered or unattractive. And, and what we talked about is, when you have these giant stacks of old books that are not in good shape, no one wants to spend time inter interacting with them. So it really hurts your circulation numbers. So in the opening up now, I'm making books that are more um, nice to be around, for lack of a better word. And then inappropriate, otherwise harmful to students. So we go with, the, with what materials are in there, make sure that they're, they're things from our kids are engaging with. Um, and the biggest difference was about a quarter of the book roughly 20 25 percent was reference books mm -hmm. um you know the clcs the the old heavy green buying books we don't use those anymore we are online databases that all the kids have access to and here's a sample of five or six online databases the kids use um you know when they when they're in english classes or ap research history classes they don't send them to the card catalog or to the um <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. The Dewey Decimal System? Yeah. <laughs> There's still no, a place for that. It's just Twitter links. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Taking me back to elementary It's important. Um, you just don't need but, a physical um, card. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called, but I remember when I was, when I was young. We have microfiche up there. Okay. <laughs> but you used to go to that big green book and find the date and look at it. Oh, yeah. Now yeah. yeah, you Google. <laughs> now you're good. Now you're done. Google. You go with these. All these are high academic rated places. So they're places with reliable sources. And so that's so we've shifted away from that in the day. That's that's why we're getting more open space in here. And I oh I don't have the upcoming presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but the board the budget will be next week next month, right? That's one of the, the ethics ethics training next month. Yeah, yeah. So those that's are great. 
Um, so any, any questions or thoughts on this? Well, I was just going to say it's looking better already and fresher. We all yes, commented yeah. on that when we came in. I'm curious, what are we going to do with all the books and things that we no longer use? Um, we donated them. Uh, books out of the library, those type of things. Nice. Um, the last time we had a weeding, which was probably 2009, um, some of the books we'll try to sell. We have some valuable books. Like we had an old Oxford English Dictionary print that was actually like the raised print that you run your oh, finger. Cool. So I think we sold that for made a pretty good amount of money on that. Some of those big books in the back there, the, the art books, the big print things, they're valuable. So we would see if, if I think they're going to keep those. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to get rid of those type of things, you would okay. look and see what you can get for them. You have now reminded me, I did have a PTA, PTA update that I neglected to mention. Tatum did a book swap mm -hmm. and it was awesome. Each of the kids brought in however many books from their home libraries that they have decided no longer suit their home libraries, got a ticket, they spread them all out all over the all-purpose room. I had hoped I was going to leave with fewer books than I entered with. I did not, but my kids were super stoked and it was just a really lovely like event. That. So well done, uh, Tatum folks. My shelves do not thank you, and my children do. <laughs> I was just going to come out of the library too. I work at an undergrad institution, right? Penn State Edmonton, and those online, that's what we use. Yes, that's what yes. kids are excited yes. to use. So I think if we're thinking about investment in college bound kiddos, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it isn't free to get access to those. No, so, like, the cost of library yeah. memberships, you know, to get those, and the cost of the technology we give every Right, so it's like yeah. we're shifting where we're aiming. Right. Yeah. So do they have school access school. to them at home, or do they have to be connected to the school's network? Like, so if they're logged in, on their Chromebook, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I guess my only question too is in the donation of stuff. Um, is anything that could be that maybe aren't valuable or anything like that? Is that something that any classes could use? I will say, as our yes. teacher for. <laughs> Collaging yeah. or well, upcycling and repurposing. I mean, we, I, I guess we probably not put out the elementary school to put that out there. Yeah, yeah. But I do know, that, like the American Heritage mag the books, like a lot of a lot of history teachers came and took them to put them in a classroom. Yeah, but even like some of the encyclopedias, like I they've used them photographs. forever, and like the images that you can find in there are the different quality than magazines or there's a lot of altered bookmaking that's like a really big you know thing especially even with a lot of like sel kind of stuff blackout poetry things like that so i remember saying that if we're going to go lower in our materials like some of these things could be really reutilized for others. I'll, I'll, I'll bring i'll bring it up to, to jess and tom great and idea. principles yeah. I will say it's my <laughs> we'll just bring them to your house jess yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i know things that you can do with them Good there? Yes. Oh, okay, uh, moving on to the board president's report. Um, tonight we're going to talk about uh, district goals and progress. And Michael, I'll, I'll give you my notes here, but we certainly want to collect this for two sack purposes as well. Um, but all of you, you know that uh, <coughs> have been okay. sent around. We're trying to um, identify a date for the board retreat. Um, one of the things that we've talked about with Chuck is <laughs> early because as they get started in the summer, there's a lot of work that gets done over the summer. All of it should be born out of what the district goals are and the board goals are. And uh, we really want to focus this board retreat on those goals. So moving it back to June. Um, in the past, we've done uh, some other kinds of uh, you know, book reports and, and those types of things, but I think that our, the, the goal this year really is going to be connecting our mission statement to the district goals, to the board goals, to the superintendent goals, and then ultimately to the, the merit goals, and, and stitching them all together so that they work in tandem with each other. So that will be our focus for um, the retreat, and I will be sending you materials so that we can all be prepared. I mean, that's everything that I just talked about. There's a lot there. So to get it done in a few hours, it, it's not going to work unless we've um, you know, had, had some, some substantial work, work uh, done in advance. So I'm kind of working through that now. We'll get more to you um, uh, pretty soon. So just 
going back though to where we are right now and talking about our, our progress over the past year or so, we talked about the district's goals are belonging, engagement, and school time. We know that those are the goals. So um, Chuck went and, and talked to the heads of the, you know, all of our different areas and the reports that, and, and there's a lot of good stuff here. So when it comes to belonging, um, in central office, they've been doing consulting regarding inclusion in self-contained rooms, uh, HMHS, peer leader initiatives, during lunch, quizzo, spike ball tournament, um, continuation of the Positive Coaches Alliance, focusing on, on freshman students, uh, quarterly freshman community meetings to review upcoming events. You know, this is the first time that, that they're here. So uh, here's the upcoming events and here are the expectations and answering any questions that go along with that. At the middle school, um, assessing involvement in clubs and activities, especially those who were, um, that, that seem that there's not, uh, that there's some disengagement there and how can they get more engagement? Um, and then just ongoing social activities such as the ice cream social, star student, week of respect. At the elementary level, responsive classroom, classroom charters, uh, buddy classes where there's a partner for each class at the school at a different level, school meetings, positive messages in hallways. So all the things that uh, the, the different areas are doing to address belonging. Um, engagement at central office, they brought in musical th music therapy, dog therapy, and yoga. Yogurt. <laughs> yoga. <laughs> yoga, what, yogurt would be good um, At the high school, the teacher to teacher um, engagement uh, so that they can share best practices with each other. Um, this year, the junior class just got back from a trip to Washington, D.C. to visit the National Museum of, of African American History and Culture. And uh, teachers creating more engaging, engaging lessons based on build thinking classrooms. And this has led to more collaboration between students and active participation in class. Uh, at the middle school, counselors are meeting with students on a regular basis. Admin checks in with students that are uh, needing some additional support. And there's lunch bunch counseling to address the transition to, to middle school and explore stress and anxiety, as well as helping students connect with each other. At the elementary level, uh, focusing on whole class engagement, there was actually PD that was done on engagement strategies to get the, the whole class engaged and uh, a focus on self-assessment for the students and student-led conferences. And then uh, with regard to school climate, um, central office, there are Special Olympics and the uh, New Jersey Bowling Club that we recently heard about. At the high school, uh, Multicultural Day, which just happened, uh, they had a speaker on drug and alcohol safety during Wellness Day. Uh, speaker, they brought in a speaker who struggled with anxiety and bullying uh, as he was growing up, and now he's like a world-class boxer. Um, they have frequent student group meetings, student athlete training on character and leadership. And then focus lessons on learning and bouncing back from mistakes, constructive criticism, sportsmanship, creating a climate of belonging and positive digital citizenship. And then uh, with, the, with the, the middle school, check ins with students who uh, to assess their emotional well being, conflict resolution with students who struggle with peer interactions, and then the miscellaneous activities like Spirit Week fundraisers, field trips, community meetings, Wellness Day. And then at the elementary school that, you know, because they're the, the, the smaller kids, that, that climate stuff is, that climate stuff, the, the school climate is just interwoven with all the other stuff that, that they do. Um, so lots and lots of stuff that's being done throughout the district to address what the, the, the district goals are. And those this year were the district and the board goals. And I think that now next year we'll dive a little deeper and, and, um, and really get those get get more clarification on the difference between district goals and board goals and um and how they align with our mission statement that that's awesome thank you for that great recap that i'm sure took a lot of work with a lot of people to pull together all of that um but that's very helpful and really interesting to see the way uh at the building level and at the you know grade level our teams are 
leaders, our you know administrators, our teachers are finding ways to actually take those goals and kind of make them real in the classroom. And and also interesting how much they need to vary by age level, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's I I think really interesting. I like that they're all interrelated. When you were talking about school climate. Um, I was thinking about how having a climate that is encouraging failure. Uh, this came up at work. We were talking about SpaceX, and if you want to build a rocket, you're probably going to have a lot of rockets blow up and not launch. And to be comfortable with failure in order to grow, that's part of climate. That's also engagement. You have to be feel like you have belong to engage. You have all of this stuff is all interrelated, and I think it's it should impact student achievement. Amen. Next one. All right. So we will now move into public comment. We will um, begin open public comment session. Members of the community are invited to speak for up to three minutes. If you'd like to make an additional comment, you must wait until the person has had a chance to make their initial statement. All comments must be directed toward the board and not members of the public. This is an opportunity for the board to listen, but not debate issues or enter into a question and answer period. Please be aware that not all issues brought before the board will be resolved that evening. We ask you to identify yourself by stating your name and the name of your street before making your comments to the board. While public education can be an emotional issue, we strive to maintain a certain level of decorum at the meeting. Public meetings are streamed and available for replay on YouTube, and students often participate in the meetings. As such, citizens are expected to maintain a tone of courtesy and civility. Do you have any public comments? Okay. We will then move into review of the agenda. I'm always thankful when Jamie is, uh, goes away for the, <laughs> the, um, the, the, the work the session, the work session and not the voting that. session. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> just a practice round. <laughs> All right, so um, items for the Board of Education approval. Um, governance. Anything that anyone wants to go over with the governance? I have a question. So I like to have form. I know you talk about this every time. But <laughs> is it just showing um, the incidents, the reports? I don't know the right word. Since yeah. the last meeting? Yeah. Correct. They okay. did the, the, the ones that the board still hasn't taken action. We haven't so. seen. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and I was also wondering if um, we will get an update on data around any repeat offenders and repeat victims. We had talked about this a bit ago. When we, like, there was like a summary. I can't think of who gave us the report. You know, well, I never talked well, about this. Yeah. 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 Well, but I'm. Um, curious again i don't want to know these kids or their numbers but, you know but just like do we have any patterns that we need to yeah, he's and so done that, he's I, done that research we'll make sure it gets okay, okay. Right. okay well thank you okay uh anything for curriculum and special education Ready to move on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Personnel. Uh, under personnel letter H, can you just remind us CSC meetings, they happen in the summer. Can you just can you like I just feel like I don't understand. Like <laughs> So, <laughs> Gina could probably explain it better, but okay. <laughs> there's a timeline you have to meet. And right. So if someone gets a referral, you have to meet. Okay. Is that it? Oh, you look pretty good. <laughs> 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 so like, 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 you are already in the system, are those meetings typically happen during the school year, or do some go in the summer? It's literally when you're... So there, when there are like, certain see. statutory guidelines that um, dictate when those meetings have to happen. And it doesn't discriminate between students already in the district or students living in that Okay. The easiest example to give is it's uh, the middle of July. You have a concern for your third grade student, or 
your your child who lives in Hatfield that might go to some other school, um, and you send us a notice and make a referral for a child safety evaluation, we have 20 yeah. days to, to have that okay. meeting. So okay. those are the most significant meetings that happen. Yeah, how many days is it? 20? 20. Wow. Yeah. And, and, um, and the other one that comes up most frequently are reevaluation meetings. So every three years, yeah. whether that three years falls in August, June, July, um, those meetings have to happen before the three year expiration right. date uh, to develop an assessment plan to determine whether or not the child qual uh, remains. You know, yeah. Thank you. I, I mean, I know it's legit. I was just like, I need a refresher. <laughs> yeah, and then on, on top of the statutory meetings, we also get a lot of you know, parent requests for meetings. Our child safety, right. our 12 month mm -hmm. employees. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, we honor those. Yeah. It could be for a variety of reasons upcoming transition, traumatic event that just happened, yeah. other things. Like that. I always joked around when I was director of special education, I said, you can black out the windows in the child safety team office and you would not know if it's September, September, <laughs> January, yeah, or August because season. it's high volume all year round. Is there a higher volume? So for people in the situation where their student might be entering the district, they're concerned about a CST evaluation, when's the best time for them to make that self-referral to avoid no, no, I, the, the In fact, is, no I mean, the, the, only, <laughs> the only time where I can, I can assure well, you. Am I trying it, to find an accountant in April? Or? It's the <laughs> time of year during annual review season. So that's March okay. through June. So in those months, the child study team conducts somewhere like 500 meetings. Wow. And that's full time. Yeah. Yeah. That's the busiest time. That's the time I would. Maybe want to stay away from if if you it's not urgent. Do that. Thank you. Okay, and approval of, of business and finance recommendations. And approval of minutes. Anybody find any typos? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I don't have the ability to pay it. I do not have the Okay, items for future consideration. Linda, I was wondering, is there something we could, I don't know, again, the right for be doing? So if December is like, for the referendum vote. So is there, should the board consider forming a temporary, temporary like communication committee? Or I'm thinking back to the Atlantic City Conference and some different ones I went to, like, so we can help with messaging, we can help, or what, like, how can we share the load of that work maybe better than how it was being, you know, like, because right. it seemed like too much work for the LRC so last time. Work. And so like, is there a way that we can help each other out? I, I think that's going to be, September, okay. August, September, right? Okay. I mean, so, so, so yeah. um, you know, one, one of the challenges we had in, with the last go around was we had Kingsway, so we started talking about it right. too soon before the actual vote. But you, you, yeah. want, you don't want to talk about it for two years, so there's, there's, there's a formula to it. Right. Okay. And when we know, when we, when we get the stuff into the state, we know what we're the shooting for. Then you, you plan backward from there about okay. when you start okay. launching things. I mean, that so that the answer is probably in September. Okay. We'll start doing, doing that, and then we'll start having meetings and coffees and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, those things. Some start. of the things I learned in some sessions I went to is like we could have we could rotate where our board meetings are during those months leading up, so that we can have at six thirty we'll be available to walk people through um, Hannah, and then we'll meet in the Hannah Library that day for. Our, I mean, you know, I like that there's ways to encourage the public to yep. see the different oh, things yeah. and whatever. And I know that will take some organization. I don't want it to be just that committee. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right. like I want to be able to have it somehow. Yeah. So oh, that, that, that's keep, keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. Get there. yeah. So right. a couple of things that we talked about. We just never got there. Right. Yeah. No, the last no, one. No, no. Um, so once everything is finalized, then I think the next well, thing is. Right. I mean, we need to present the plan. Yeah, uh, no, right. We we also know Ron's going to be uh, our architect. He will be coming to not only the, the meeting where we talk about the, the plans, but 
He said he'd be available to, to come to any meeting that, that we wanted to. We absolutely talked about not only having, uh, you know, coffees at, at different areas, but we did talk about it doesn't necessarily need to be like the, the scheduled BOE meeting. We can't have a quorum, but right. there can be representatives at right. different locations. So and I heard some, like at some of the presentations, like when we have our two hour delays, is that a safe time to have people visit the buildings? I know we don't want to bring strangers in during which kids are there, but like, or what days are we off that may be folks like this we could partner with the senior center and then get seniors in the area into our book or what you know what i mean like there were some bunch of good ideas like that that i know will take organization so i just wanted to put it out there like you're on Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other thing for um personnel it was personnel was very light today there will be names added to higher next week we'll have oh, at least good. one oh, right. yeah you guys are working hard at least, at least one other and uh, they, they're interviewing business teachers today so we'll have we might have to yeah, Okay. <laughs> I moved. This is the next oh, second. Shit, no, sorry. <laughs> I did it non verbally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, we never. Okay, okay, okay. Right, guys. Okay.